Hey guys, my name is Rob Noir, and welcome to a video on my editing process for gaming videos. Now, if you didn't see last week, I put up a video about how I record gaming videos, covered the different consoles that I use, the methods that I use to record the footage off of them, the camera I use, the microphone, all that jazz, basically just to give you a complete overview of what I'm working with, what I'm using. And so to follow up on that, I'm going to do a video on how I actually edit all this stuff after it's recorded. Now, before I really dive into it, I want to address something that someone asked me after having seen that video, which is why don't you just do everything in your game capture recording software? And that's a valid point. So let me kind of dive into my methodology and why I do it this way and why most of the big YouTubers do it this way as well. So the recording software that I use obviously is the Elgato software which works with my capture card. And if you use this you do have the option to add in a webcam face cam as well as add in and record off of your mic directly onto it. And using that you can be like well okay so everything's recorded onto the video when it's done you export it as one thing and you don't have to fuck around with any of the tech that I've talked about. You're right. The reason why I don't do this is... Well, there's a lot of reasons. One of the reasons is if you don't have a very powerful computer, it's going to affect everything. My computer's pretty good, but even I have noticed it on really powerful games, and this is one of the reasons why I switched away. For example, your gameplay footage recording is gonna drop frames when there's lots of shit happening. Your mic might start getting staticky, your face cam might drop out. You can have issues with this. Now, if you have a really good computer, it, it, this isn't necessarily a problem, and I didn't notice it much, just on like really graphically amazing, powerful games, but this is one reason. The other reason is recording with a dedicated camera, a dedicated mic, everything separate, is just so much higher quality. No webcam I have ever seen or come across can compare to what you can get out of an actual digital camera. Like, maybe it exists? I've seen some webcams that can supposedly do 4K and sell for like $800. And then at the end of the day, it's still a webcam. You can't take it places. And for close to the same amount, you can buy an actual digital camera that you can. So I'm like... And the other reason why is probably the biggest reason biggest reason why I don't record everything in a recording software like the Elgato Capture, it's because shit happens all the time. When you're running everything off of a computer, things will go wrong. It's not a question of whether it will happen, it's just when will it happen. And when you have everything running through your computer, your mic, your face cam, your gameplay recording, when everything is running through it, it means if shit goes wrong, you can lose everything. And this has happened to me. The first series I ever recorded was Pokemon Red, and I lost like three or four episodes of footage just because. I also lost some episodes in Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, another game I did, just because everything decided to fuck up. It wasn't immediately apparent in the moment, and then at the end, literally it's all gone. With this, usually the gameplay recording will not completely mess up, and if, for example, my microphone mess messes up, I still have the microphone of my face cam, or if my camera messes up, I still have the audio. Keeps everything separate, clean, neat, and really just, it's the most safe way to do it. Plus, it's in such better quality than what you can get using like a webcam in their software. Now, if you do decide to do this, if you do decide to use all their stuff, that's fine, that works too. A lot of what you're gonna see here is still going to apply, and I'll actually mention how some of it relates. So with that being said, let's get into my actual editing process, how I edit my videos, what I use, what I do, just to basically give you guys a really simple tutorial, like a baseline to use if you try and do these kind of videos. Now the program that I use is called Final Cut Pro. And if you're like an actual editor or whatever, you're probably hearing that and you might be like, why are you using Final Cut Pro? Why not use Adobe Premiere? So Adobe Premiere is probably the biggest name in the industry right now for doing this kind of thing. It's an amazing program. I have used it, I love it. The reason why I use Final Cut Pro is because unlike Adobe Premiere, I have a free 
legal copy of Final Cut Pro, and I don't have that for Adobe Premiere. And doing this as kind of like a hobby, I can't really justify spending the money to buy Adobe Premiere. But don't worry, if you are using Adobe Premiere or you're using like iMovie, Windows Movie Maker, Lightworks, whatever, a lot of what I'm going to show you here, the techniques are the exact same in any of those programs. All you're going to have to do is figure out exactly where to go in the menu to do what I'm doing. So I can't show you that. That'll only be able to show for this program, but the techniques, the methods, everything I'm doing is completely transferable depending on what you're using. So don't worry. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is boot up your editing program. For me, it's Final Cut Pro right here, as you can see. So open that up, let it load, and then when you're in there, different things handle this differently, but basically you want to make a folder for your project, for whatever project that may be. In Final Cut Pro, it's an event. So you make an event, name it what the project is, get that going, and then you're going to want to find all the files for this editing project. That's your face cam video, that's your gameplay, your game audio, your mic audio, all of that. Select it all, drag it in, drop it, let it import. And here's one of the fun things. Don't touch anything while it's importing. Different editing programs handle this differently, but generally when it's actually importing it into your program, you don't want to fuck with it. If you do, that's how you get corrupted files and other things fucking up. So put that in there, don't touch it, let it go. While you're waiting, you can, you know, um, get a cup of tea, you can watch a YouTube video, or I don't know, put on a chicken mask and terrorize the villagers. I mean, it's your time, do with it what you will. Okay, so everything's imported, it's all there, it's all good. You're good to go. Now what do you do? Now the first thing you're going to want to do is synchronize all your clips. Now most good video editing softwares have this feature built in. Some of the cheaper ones, the not great free ones don't and you kind of have to do this manually. And I'll show you a little bit more about that after the synchronization. But for the purposes of this, let's just assume that you have Premiere, Final Cut Pro or something that can do this. So select all the clips. For me, I right click and then I click synchronize and you're going to see this loading bar and you can't usually do much while it's doing that. It's pretty much like when you import it. So again, while this is happening, go and do something else. I don't know. It's up to you. Okay. So everything's synchronized. Everything's good to go. You don't have to worry about that shit anymore. You don't really have any more waiting times from this point on until the end of your project. So if you were able to create an event, a folder like I was in your editing program, great. If you had to directly create a project, okay, then skip what I'm about to do, which is create a project. So you go down here and you click new project. And then again, name it whatever your video is going to be. So for me, it's Mario Odyssey 4. Just recorded that earlier today. It will be going up two days from when this video goes up. So I don't know when you're seeing this, it might already be out, but name it what it's going to be. Keep things simple for yourself. Now you should have this synchronized clip if you're using a program that supported that. So drag that clip into your project. For me, this clip is one hour and 11 minutes long. That's pretty fucking long. It's a long play, but that's, that's just the one that I've chosen to use for this. So, okay. What you're going to need to do is open up this clip, open it up in your timeline, whatever. And so what you're going to see is something that looks like this. Now, if you are using the Elgato way where you record everything into one, what I would suggest is actually because Elgato lets you keep all those separate files, grab those separate files and use those and arrange them like this. Don't use the all in one. It's usually very easy to synchronize the game audio with the game capture video or just use the audio that's already in it. Now, this is one of the reasons why I'm telling you to always have separate files. It's because you will set a certain amount for your game audio to be at when you record, but it's never quite right. It always varies from game to game, from system to system. I have presets that I usually use. For example, the first thing I'm going to do is mute it on the actual 
clip itself because I have the audio below synchronized to it. If you have both playing at once, it makes it extra loud and can make it sound really compressed and staticky. And then what I'm going to do is go over here into audio and then lower the volume to the level that I usually have it at. Now, when I'm recording off the switch, the level that I find works for my videos is about negative 30 decibels from the original recording. Now, depending on the game, I might want to go negative 25, negative 20. On Breath of the Wild, I even do negative 15 when I was recording off the Wii U. Usually it varies and you kind of have to listen to it when you're editing to know. For me, I know it's probably this, so that's what I'm leaving it at. Now, you're going to notice that everything is kind of lined up. And you also notice that I have two audio files here. That's because my Tascam audio recorder does two, one at bass volume and one at negative six. And the negative six is great because if you have a peak, like you can see like these little yellow lines, there's one there. There's one there, but they're all over the place in this top one. When you have a peak, you can use the lower volume one to repair that. I usually use the lower volume track for everything. So I will actually delete the top track unless it was everything was in range, which it wasn't. Then I have this here. Now, one of the peculiarities of my recording setup is that everything is recorded in stereo. So it's basically assuming that you have a mic on the left side and a mic on the right side. That's not the case here. I only had one. So what I have to do is go over here and change it to dual mono. That changes it from going from only one speaker to basically both simultaneously. Doesn't affect the quality. That's what you wanna do. Now, I also have an effect that I always put on all my audio. And that, if I can find it quickly here, is an audio effect called compressor. Now, what compressor does is it takes this clip and it raises the lows and tries to make everything even. So if you're like talking super fucking loud, or sometimes you're also kind of whispering, it's going to take those and try and make them kind of meet. It is a very valuable tool and I suggest you put it on all your audio when possible. It does lower the quality the slightest amount, but it's worth it so that if I'm kind of far away from the mic and I'm not talking as loudly or when I'm talking very loudly, everything kind of meets in the middle and you don't have super quiet parts, super loud parts all over the place. So I would suggest putting a compressor onto your audio. I'll take a moment to render and register that's done that, but definitely the first move you want to do. Now, the next thing that you're going to want to do in here is make sure that your face cam and your audio is lined up. Now, remember in the last video when I told you to put cues, as in the one, two, three, clap your hands. So that is what you're going to judge by. Let's check. And I'll play that back again at a higher volume because I couldn't hear shit. One, two, three. The audio is perfectly synchronized. It's great when it does that. Sometimes though, your program might put them off by a few frames. And what you want to do in this case, when your face cam and your actual mic audio is not perfectly synced, is zoom in, zoom in as far as you can to when you smack your hands. And now, as you can see here, there's this little smack mark. You can see exactly where I smack my hands. That's where the noise happens, right there. So what you're going to want to do if things are slightly out of line is make sure it's very visible where that is. And then you're just going to drag them around, move them a frame or two at a time until they line up. Listen, make sure it works and go from there. Now, as you can see, I have several face cam videos for this. So I need to double check that each one is lined up correctly. This thought looks pretty good for a blood pump power dash. That one's fine. Doesn't take that long either, which is cool. That one's fine as well. Your audio might sound a little weird, and that's because the two different audio tracks over top each other layering gives it this really compressed, strange sound, but it should never be echoey or out of sync. That's basically what you're looking for. Okay, and when you're sure that your audio is lined up perfectly, that's great. So you can actually mute the audio from your camera. You don't need it anymore. You're just using the audio from your good quality mic. That's all you need. So... <sighs> It's a little bit awkward, I gotta say, having my editing computer here in the mic and I gotta fucking reach around. Not in that way, but... So, great. So everything's lined up. Now, if you remember, I also told you to go in a menu and do a visual cue to line up everything. So let's see how that looks. 
Okay, so what you're gonna want to do is go to the first bit where I s where you say that. See, that's exactly where I say it. So then mark out on your face cam and your mic audio exactly where that is. I put a little marker. It's exactly what I do. Now that you have for reference when you need to line this up with the gameplay which is coming soon. Now, as I was saying, if you don't have the ability to synchronize your clips with just the click of a button like I do, like you can in Final Cut Pro or Premiere, this is basically what you're going to be doing, just not inside a synchronized clip. You're going to be doing this manually, arranging all this stuff. So this is why it's good for you to see this, because it'll show you a little bit how I do it and hopefully help you. So the next thing that I do is I try and go to when I'm actually... Man, I look fucking angry there. I try and go to when I'm actually recording... A little bit later on and then I make the face cam video the correct size that it's supposed to be and this is another reason why you want to always have a separate file because sometimes it's worth cutting to a full picture of you and not the game like something funny happens if you're talking to it and nothing's happening or there's just a lot of times you want to cut to a full wide shot and if everything is already compiled into a video, you don't get that option. It's not something I do a ton of. I do it more when there's two people and it's like me and Phil and he says something really dumb or I say something really dumb and he reacts to it. That's more when I use it, but you want to be able to do that. The way I make the face cam video the standard size is I go into video here. I go on it and then I make it about 30%. You can see it's now that size. Now that's about that's about right but you notice the video is it's still in the correct resolution it's not what a normal face cam a square in the corner normally is so then what i do is i crop the video now generally what i crop is 600 pixels total so that can be a combination of that on each side for example this one looks like probably about 200 on the left and 400 on the right uh, let's see Yet, so it's not quite enough on the left, so let's try 250, and you don't forget to reduce this one to that. And that's, I'm perfectly centered, that's about where I want it to be. And if I end up moving around a lot in the camera, like I slump down or I do whatever, I used to do that a lot, I don't really do it anymore, I've learned, but if that happens, you can adjust your crop so that you're always center frame. So basically that's it, now you just wanna move the face cam to the corner. I typically do top right. I know a lot of Let's Players do top left. For me, I just, I'm always recording from here. That's just the angle that when I first started doing it, it's the only angle I could do. And now I'm just used to it. So you wanna move it to top left. Now it's usually around, okay, that's 750. I'm moving it 760, no, 770, 780. 780 it's 780 pixels over and then the top for me is always 385 if you check like 370 see so you see a little bit of sliver 385 is exactly where i want it to be there we go i have my face cam lined up now using this you can move your face cam to wherever you want like you could put it in the very bottom negative 385 if you wanted to make sure that you could see the health bar and all that it depends on the game now another thing to mention here is that if I had to put it on the top left, I just obviously reverse somewhat where it is, but you will want to flip your video so that it looks like you're actually looking at the game and you're not still looking like the same direction out into space. This is something I never used to do when I first started recording and it's why some of my videos looked a little weird now going back to them, but it's, it's something you should do and it's not hard. All you're gonna have to do for this is just go into wherever your effects are. It varies program to program. Mine are here. I go into here and I look for flipped, which is this one here. And if I put that onto that, you're gonna notice I'm flipped over and then I can move it over to the correct way. You are going to have to readjust your crop, but this is just, if you need it facing the other way, here's how you do it. I don't, so I'll put it there. And I also don't want myself in the bottom. I don't find it's a Mario game. I don't find cutting off the health actually has any significant impact. I don't want it in the other co corner because I find the coins are kind of important. So there you go. So your face cam is the right size. Now you need to just get all this lined up with your actual gameplay. So scroll to the beginning of your gameplay. If you remember the cue, the there that I always do, you want to look for when that happens. And something I mentioned in the last video, make sure that when you're syncing everything up, don't touch the controller. Don't do 
anything until you've done the sync. If you do, it makes this next part super confusing, super hard. If you don't, it makes it the easiest shit ever. So right now I'm on this menu, and I just need to scroll through until I find the menu, till I find where it moves, basically. Oh, okay. So I found the first place where it moves. If I hit play, there we go. And so I know that when I was recording, I moved the joystick as I made that fart noise. So I know that's exactly when that event happens. And the exact frame is right there. So what I do is I mark that, and then I just got to drag everything into place. So I drag my audio, and then I drag all my face cam videos. Make sure you select all of them if there are multiple, otherwise your first one will be in sync and your others just got out of sync. So then I just drag that there, and then I can replay a bit to make sure, but everything should be good. So let's watch. Oh, I'm doing things. I'm moving around. I'm coughing. There we go. Everything is perfectly synced. That's all I have to do in the timeline for now. I will have to resize these other videos to fit and be the same size as my face cam later. I leave them like that so I have a cue. I can see it when I'm editing. I know when I have to cut. So I know when things, when I had to switch face cam video. So that's, that's all very standard. So I exit out of the timeline. If you didn't have a timeline or didn't have a sync, you're just in your project now and that's just the thing. If you're able to combine all those clips, this is the time to do it. But again, remember that if you want to do a full shot, take that into account. That's why a program like Final Cut Pro, which has synchronization, is super useful. So now I just need to get to where my video actually started. And I, ha I remember I just recorded this. I had to mess around a bit, get everything loaded up, get everything ready, so it's not right away. One of the tricks that I use, as you can see in the audio, I'm usually pretty quiet until the video actually starts. So you notice that this is all like dead audio, and then suddenly here, Take a deep breath and I start the video. <laughs> Rewind a bit to make sure I don't cut off anything. And then you want to cut your video right there. Delete all the excess. There you go, you've taken the first step. Your video is synchronized, it's in there, you've gotten rid of everything, the video has basically started. So what do you do now? Well, the first thing you're gonna wanna do, and I'll get more into this later, is but put a tiny audio transition at the very beginning of the project. I would suggest one to three frames at most. I usually do three frames. Again, I'll get into more of this later, but basically just, there you go. And now, as you notice, the audio seems very quiet. So what I need to do is boost it up to a normal listening level. So I basically just go into the audio and I just bump this up. Again, it will depend on the project, on the game, how much you boost it. I generally boost everything between five and nine decibels. The thing you want to look out for and make sure doesn't happen is a bunch of yellow peaking audio. Like for example, if I went to 12, let's see. Oh, it didn't, it didn't do it. Okay, so I, I had pretty solid audio. It was all very even, but sometimes if you go to that high, it will make the audio like super crazy yellow. And whenever that happens, you're gonna get like this screeching static sound and that's just not what you want in your video if you want it to be like high quality. And so the video is all ready to go. Everything's set up, everything's ready. All you have to do is edit it. So this is the bit where you can't really teach. The basics would be if nothing is happening, nobody's talking, cut that shit out, nobody cares. But it, it will depend. Like sometimes there's silence when I'm doing something very intense or that involves a lot of skill or whatever. And in those cases, I'll leave in the silence, but generally, if there's nothing happening, if there's no commentary, you wanna cut that shit out. And another thing I'll say is that if you have to repeat the same section or the same thing over and over and over, cut that shit out, they've already seen it, it's boring. You don't need to show that. Again, this is really something you kinda have to get a feel for yourself, but that's just a basic guideline. Now, I'm going to watch and edit a little bit, and when I make my first cut, we'll cut back to that. Hey guys, my name is Rob Noir, and welcome back to Super Mario Odyssey. Okay, so right there, that's a bit where I basically go silent for a while while I'm just running around doing stuff. So that's a little bit of space that 
I don't need to leave in the video. So I'm going to cut my video right there and then I'm going to cut it again right before where I start talking and start doing things and then basically just remove that part. That's the basics of video editing, chopping shit out that doesn't need to be there. And it's rendering very slowly right now because I have so much running on my computer to capture me capturing, the do you know, but okay, so there, it's rendered a little bit. You can see basically I don't say anything until right about here. So I'm just going to cut that out. And then what I was talking about before is adding an audio transition. Now this is different in Adobe Premiere than it is Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro, you just want to grab the audio here and just inch it forward a bit. And I usually do three frames. So why do you want to do this? What is it for? Whenever you cut a video, your audio is almost always going to have like a slight little click or pop at the end when you switch from one clip to another. This always happens. Now, if you have like powerful background music or some other shit, it might not be super obvious and you might not be able to pick up on it a lot, but it's always there and sometimes it can be terrible. Now, if you put a tiny audio transition, as I said, three frames here, it will get rid of that pop. Now, this is one of the most important things you can ever do in video editing because it's going to make your video so much better, sound so much better, and be so much more watchable. It can be a hassle to get into the habit of doing this, but do it. Now, in Adobe Premiere, like I said, it's I think it's a thing you have to drag onto it, if I remember, but always put it. And I suggest one to three frames. I say one to three, and I usually do three because sometimes only one, the pop can still have a slight lingering effect. And three frames is so imperceptible to the ear. Like if I'm going to break it down, your video is probably either in 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. Now let's say it's in 30 like mine are. I always do 30 because it's just 60 frames. It Sometimes my capture device fucks up and can't reliably record at 60. So I do it at 30 where I know it's going to work. So three frames out of 30 frames a second. That's one tenth of a second audio fade. It's literally not perceptible to your ear unless you're super good at this and you're really listening, but even then I usually can't detect it. So you're not gonna notice this and it's gonna get rid of that annoying fucking popping noise that's just filling your ears. So highly suggest you do this. It's super important. It's gonna improve your videos. It's probably, if you learn anything from this, it's one of the best things that you need to do one of the most important that you need to do when editing your videos hopefully i got that point across i didn't do this for the longest time and then somebody who is a professional editor pointed it out and is like why don't you just do this and i'm like because i didn't know now i do it <laughs> it's annoying to get in the habit of but it's really important to do and basically that's the editing process you just trim the fat you cut out the shit that doesn't need to be there you leave in the shit that does and occasionally maybe you put like a funny little picture or some text or some animation or whatever. Um, generally when it's a shortcut, like I'm talking less than a minute and I'm still doing the same thing in between the two clips, I will just cut it straight out, put that transition and leave it at that. Now if it's a long cut, like let's say it's like four minutes of footage that I just cut out because nothing happens or there's nothing important going on, or if it's like still like a few minutes and like I've moved from one area to the next generally I will put a fade transition which looks like it's over here I usually use cross dissolve right up here and so basically it now looks like it kind of had problems rendering it there just because I have so much going on basically that's what it looks like instead of just cutting directly to it. And there are other methods to edit this, like you can use, I think it's called X and Y cuts, which is where you'll have the audio slightly overlap from what you were seeing before. For a gaming video, I've never really found that works. It's a little bit too advanced for this kind of thing, but just know that when you feel comfortable with this, there's more you can do. And so one of the other techniques that I'll show you is say you wanted to cut to full view in here. Right now you're like this. So stake out the little chunk that you want to cut to full view in and then just go in here and just turn off your resizing and your crop and you have the full view video. I always try and stake out the chunk where I want to do this beforehand instead of trying to kind of do it on the fly because it just makes things easier. But there you go. And if you haven't staked it out and then just cut where you want the full cam to end and then just turn this shit back on. There you go very easily. 
very easy. Another thing to note here is that in the timeline or whatever is where you can mess with your clips. Like for example, if your gameplay or your face cam is too dark, too light, you have whatever problems you, this is where I would suggest you tinker with that so that it doesn't affect everything and you can give them all independent settings. For example, when I record an old game, like an NES game, I have to resize it because even though it will display the correct resolution on my TV, my upscaler basically records it in like widescreen all stretched and it looks ugly as shit. So in here I will go to distort and I'll distort things a certain amount. For me, I do believe it's usually 290. And basically by doing that, I will return my game footage to the correct resolution. Also, because you now have this black space just everywhere on the sides, I also usually put a background that's related to my channel to kind of associate the video more with my channel. I usually use like the red background, so I would put that like right around there, and then see so you would have the red background. This is a Switch game, it's new, it's in 1080p, so I don't have to do any of this shit, but just know that it's there. Alright guys, so that's all the basics, that's all the main stuff I do. So now I'm actually going to sit down and spend the next probably about an hour editing this video. When I'm done, we'll come back and I'll kind of do a quick overview and give you some more tips, some more tricks, and kind of finish everything off. Alright guys, so I'm very close to being done the edit here. I'm right at the end and so I thought I would boot this camera back up and share this little end process with you. Honestly, I think I've already covered all the major tips that I would give to you if you want to do this yourself. The only other tip I could think of while I was editing was I don't wait for everything to render because I have to cut so much up, move so much around, and it takes so long. So sometimes the audio like on the bar down here will not be rendered so you can't immediately see where there's talking and where there isn't. So the only tip or trick that I could say for that if you want to know what to cut out and you don't want to have to actually wait for everything to render or listen through is just scroll through like with your bar here and look for when like your lips move or when the person's lips move and use that as a cue as to when the next bit is. That would probably be the only other advice. But all right, so we're very, we're very close to being done here. We're right at the end. So what I do at the end is I find a gap. Like right here, there's no speaking and I cut it and then I lift that clip up and then I go down to here and I use a fade to black, fade to color effect on it. And I'll just fade it right out to black. And what I do is I go to about halfway through the fade and I mark that. And I drag that out and we're good. And then what I do here is I always have an event that I put in every single library called Essentials. This is all the stuff that I use in pretty much every project I ever do. For example, this is my outro screen, which you may have seen before. So I'm going to drag that down onto my timeline and then I have put in personally a cue for me. So if I scroll through this here, you notice that. So the frame after I mark that and I drag that to here and it's probably going to stutter when I try and play it here, but yeah, it did kind of stutter, but basically it goes right to, you don't see the red, it just fades right into my outro screen. And then basically we just need to find the content to fill these two guitar shaped square boxes. And so what I do for that is I drag in previous videos that I've done. For this one, because it's the fourth episode of Super Mario Odyssey, I would be putting in the third one to link back to it. And also just another video that in somehow relates to it. For example, in this episode, I talked about the game Ukulele. So I'm going to drag in also the last episode of Ukulele that I did. Okay, so all that stuff is done importing. So now you're going to go in here find those files like for example the ukulele one right here you can x that off and i'm just i just need the first little bit so i'm just chopping it down to there i'm gonna drag it in between here lined up with that right there perfect that's exactly what i need and then the mario odyssey one is right here so i'm going to do the same thing drag it onto my it's a little glitchy right now as a result of all the recording setup and everything, but there, okay, so they're they're fine. So, and then what I'm going to do is grab everything, chop it off right here at the end, delete all that excess crap, and then I have this right here, 
and then I just need to resize them. For my end screen, I already know exactly the size I need to make them. Everything always goes in the exact same places. Um, yours, whatever you're doing, obviously will vary. I just like to have these videos with their audio going on behind the cards at the end to kind of give like a little bit of a teaser of what's going on. And the best way to do that is to put the actual video. And some different ways to view YouTube don't actually show the cards. Like on my Xbox One, you don't usually see it, so a lot of people's end screens just look weird and bad. So this kind of solves that issue where there will still actually be something. So I'm just going to put everything to the way I usually have it, which is 33, 522, top one is at 210, the bottom one gets the exact same settings, 33, 522, and it goes to negative 197. And then the last step I do here is I just remove the audio from them. And then I look for where it's supposed to switch over, which you can see is where that white bar switches right there. Perfect. And then I just trim them back to where they fit those places. Try and give them a bit of an audio feather in. There we go. An audio feather out. And we're pretty much good to go. That's all there is to it. All right, guys. So that's pretty much everything that goes into editing one of my videos. I didn't show you the full process because that would have been an hour of me pretty much in silence doing little modifications here and there, and it wasn't that interesting, but I gave you the gist of it. I explained everything that I do on a regular basis, showed you exactly what I do, and hopefully showed you some things that you can use for yourself in order to edit a video. Because basically what we just did, we have completely finished it. Now all I have to do is just let it sit there and render, which does take a while. Unfortunately, much like importing and synchronizing and everything, it's you kind of have to go off and do something else for a while and not touch it and just kind of let it do its thing. But as soon as it's done rendering, you then should rewatch the entire thing front to back to make sure any edits, everything you've done, they jive, they look good, it all works. And this is something where it can be an issue, like if you animate stuff across the screen or are using weird effects, sometimes even though they look right when you first put them in, after the render, they can be kind of messed up and you gotta go in and fix them. So you should always watch back your video after you're done editing it. Again, if you're in a rush and you have like a lot of trust in your skills, maybe you'll skip this part. I know I do more often than not, but it's one of those do as I say, not as I do situations. Try and watch back what you've done. Believe me, those little mistakes, they can slip by the more you rush. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much everything I do to edit my gaming videos. Hopefully this tutorial was of some use to you. Um, I tried to cover all the bases and keep it as broad as I could while still showing you the individual things that I tend to do. So I didn't get super thorough, but I covered like all the bases, you know? And if you've never edited or you're thinking about getting into it, hopefully this will be a good stepping stone to get you there. So yeah, if you have any questions about what I did in there, if something was unclear, you have any comments, or you think you know a better way, let me know down in the comments below, and I'll definitely try and reply and clear up anything, or be like, no, that doesn't work for me, I've tried that, or oh, that's a good idea, you know? Because uh, that's kind of one of the cool things about YouTube, is that kind of, you can get to have a conversation, which is, which is a lot of fun. And if this video did help you out in some way, let me know, I'd definitely love to hear about it. So yeah, guys, that pretty much sums it all up. Hopefully this helped and as always I will see you in the next one hey guys my name is Rob Noir and so I recently got asked a few times about how I record my gaming videos if you're new to this channel I do a lot of let's plays among other content this game is just awesome guys it is just so much fun Mario is sleeping oh my god I realized he was sleeping